Let me tell you about this story of me while I was in the psych ward. Don't ask why I was in the psych ward, just know that I was there. Okay, so while I was there, we had to do these group meetings as soon as we woke up and before we went to bed. We had to wake up at like 9 a.m. in the morning. I hated it there, I was depressed. I'd always give the workers shit about going to those meetings. I was like, fuck y'all, I'm not going to those goddamn meetings. One night my stomach was hurting really bad, so they let me skip the meeting and sleep early. And I had gotten up in the middle of the night to go ask for some stomach medicine. When I walk out of my room, I see this little boy standing at the end of the hall, like. And so I'm like, hello? And this motherfucker goes. <laughs> And starts hissing at me like Mind you when he went He had scissors in his hand I knew I could outrun that motherfucker So I started hissing at him back I said Yeah motherfucker What's up little mail packet Yeah What's really going on Then he starts going Aww. So I match his energy once again And I start going Aww. Who the fuck is you doing that to Who? Then he picks up his scissors like this And charges dead at me I zoomed out that hallway so fast Bitch I disappeared I left for part 2 Because it only gets worse Part two of the story of me in the psych ward. So like I said, this little white boy who's like four foot eight starts chasing me down the hallway with his little chicken legs. Mind you, he had scissors in his hands. Oh, he was actually trying to kill me. You'll know why I think that in the end. So mind you, while he was chasing me, I did not look back. Not once. I didn't know if this motherfucker was gonna start climbing the walls. Yeah, I don't know if he was gonna start crawling on the ceiling. My main goal was just to get away. So I eventually make it to the front desk. And I look behind me to see if he was still there. Well, he wasn't, so I'm guessing that he stopped chasing me at the end of the hall. The front desk lady is looking at me like... Mind you, we weren't allowed to carry scissors or even pencils or anything like that because it was dangerous. And so I didn't want to get that little boy in trouble. So I just told her like, no, I'm good. I just need medicine. Well, eventually they did end up finding him with the scissors anyways and took it away from him. But baby, he found a way to get that shit back. The next morning, everybody came out for breakfast and these workers were dragging the same little boy out of his room. And he was like kicking and screaming and all of that. Well, turns out he stole another pair of scissors in the middle of the night, stabbed another kid in his sleep. Part three of the story of me in the psych ward. So like I said, this same little boy who was chasing me last night with a pair of scissors had sneaked into another kid's room in the middle of the night and stabbed him in his sleep. This little boy's goal was to harm. And it could have easily been me. And I was over there fucking around with that kid talking about, ah, hissing at him because he was hissing at me. I could have died. What if I couldn't have outran him? I would have gotten stabbed. I thought that it was just some weird little boy. I did not think that he was trying to really hurt somebody. Well, rumors started going around the psych ward that the reason that he stabbed that other kid was because... He had asked that other boy, I think it was a boy that he stabbed, for his Roblox username so they could play together when they get out. And that kid said no because of the HIPAA violation or whatever. So while that kid was sleeping in the middle of the night, he had gone into his room and stabbed him. Because he didn't give him his Roblox username. Story time about how a cop intimidated me into going on a date with him. This all happened six years ago when I had just turned 18. I had saved up a lot of money to buy a car. When I finally got my new car, I felt so independent. My dad would help me pay for the insurance and the gas, and I just had to take care of the car and make sure I drove safely. And I was a really safe driver. I never sped or made any illegal turns. In fact, I was scared of other people driving, so I was extra careful. Even though I was 18, my parents still had a curfew on me. I come from a Latin family, and they are very strict, so I followed the rules. Around this time, my parents started letting me date. I was really excited because there was this boy in high school who always wanted to to date me but I could never say yes. I told him we were finally able to date and he got really excited. We started going to the beach and hanging out with friends but this meant that I would have to drive long distances to the beach and back and my biggest fear was to get pulled over. I don't know, for some reason I thought that was like the worst thing in the entire world. On my way to the beach one day, I get pulled over by this cop. I knew I wasn't speeding and I hadn't done anything illegal. I pull over and he asked me for my documents. Then he just stares at me for 30 seconds without saying anything. The first thing out of his mouth is, wow, you're very pretty. Part 2 is up. Part 2 of how a cop intimidated me into going on a date with him. The first thing out of his mouth is, wow, you're really pretty. Then he asked me if I was single. I instantly froze up and didn't even know what to say to him. Keep in mind, I had just turned 18. I felt totally vulnerable and exposed. He put his hand on my car door and leaned down towards me. This guy was really intimidating. Then he asked me a bunch of questions. Was I single again? Was I dating anyone? Was I still in high school? Did I have other friends that were pretty like me? I would laugh off his questions because I didn't even know how to respond. I was in total shock and didn't know what to do. Then he says, seriously though, are you single? And since I technically was, I said yes. His demeanor totally changed. He became more aggressive. Then he said, what do you think if I go pick you up tonight for dinner? He points to my license and says, you live right by me. My knees started to shake. Finally, I said, I'm actually seeing someone. Then he just stares at my entire body up and down. He stroked my hair and asked me if I was scared. Part 3 is up. Part 3 of how a cop intimidated me into going on a date with him. After he stroked my hair and asked me if I was scared, I said no. He could clearly see my hand shaking though. He knew that I was scared. He finally backed off and handed me my documents. He goes to his car and leaves me waiting for 13 minutes. By the way, my friends and the guy that I was seeing were waiting for me at the beach. That's when I start getting phone calls from him. I decided to answer and tell him what was going on. That's when he said to me to not get out of the car and to just say no to anything he said. That's when the cop bangs on my window. He asked me who I was talking to on the phone. I hung up the phone and told the cop that I was talking to my dad. I finally got the courage to ask him if I did anything wrong. He said no, but he saw a pretty girl so he 
we had to pull her over. He fully expected me to laugh at that. He finally handed me my license back and asked me when we were going to go on that date. Again, he crouched down and was right in my face. I said we could go on a date that night. I gave him a wrong phone number. Of course, I didn't show up to the date. I told my parents and we went to the nearest police station. We made a complaint, but nothing ever came of it. They essentially told him to leave me alone. Remember, he knows where I live. If 